A man once arrived in Medina and he was wearing exceedingly white garments and he had exceedingly dark and black hair and it seemed as if he wasn't one of them and as he came he knelt down by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he began to ask the Prophet some questions tell me about the last hour and to that the Prophet replied that the one who asks the question knows no more than one who is being asked meaning neither you nor I know the details precisely about when the last hour will be and then the man said then tell me about the signs of the last day what are those preceding events those things that will happen before the last hour comes upon people what will happen and the Prophet began to enumerate some of those signs the first thing he said is that when you see the slave girl giving birth to her mistress that it means there will be some kind of a social involution a social reversal it means that children will show impiety towards their parents that children would become like masters over their parents the kids would become the dominance and the parents would become the subordinates in another hadith Rasul said when the son he chooses his friend closer and distances his father away it never existed in their days even among the christians and the jews this didn't exist it was a time that was very unusual to the people that the mother will give birth to her daughter who when she grows up she acts like she's the master and boss over her own mother rasul tells us that they will curse a lot La'an. and rasul said people will curse their own fathers it means that People no longer value parenthood. People no longer value the relationships of people with others. They'll wipe them off, they'll curse them, they'll have hatred, and people only think about themselves. The Prophet ﷺ described a world of deceit where you will disbelieve the one who is speaking the truth and you will believe the one who is lying and you will place your trust in the one who is treacherous and you will regard treacherous the one who is trustworthy. Complete reverse. In Sahih Muslim and Bukhari, you find the hadith of the one the Prophet described a situation like this. And said, so it will get to this stage where one man will say about another person who lives far off because there's so much dishonesty and treachery. I don't know who to trust anymore. That someone will say about another person living in a far distance, oh, that person, what a good person that person is. And how strong he is. And how good he is. But the Prophet said, but that person doesn't even have an atom, atom's weight of iman in his life. Rasul Sallallahu said, oh Allah, bear witness, I have informed. I have informed. He was sad. What is he saying? I saw in Hellfire a group of women, for example, whom I've never seen the likes of before, meaning of the future. They are dressed but undressed. They walk in a seductive manner. And they do fashions upon their heads in order to, in a type that attracts attention. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, this is something of the future. He's never seen the likes of before, not among the Romans, the Byzantines of his time. He did not see them among the Persians of his time. He did not see them among the Mushrikeen of his time. Or among the Muslims of his time. This is something which the humans begin to do at large, Muslim, non-Muslim. And he said, among my ummah, from my nation, subhanallah, the last hour will not come until you find yourself that if you are among 20 young men, more or less, and you are a believer, you're a good believer, and you looked at, you know, and found out that none of them fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is time for the hour. What is he saying? He's saying, when you see young men, there are many of them, and they're in large numbers together, hanging out in certain places or going together, and you cannot see any signs of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their faces as a whole, then wait for the last hour to come. We're talking about from the Ummah of the Prophet. What does this mean? 
In the nightclubs, they go in groups. In mixed weddings, singing and dancing, they're in groups. Going out to meet two or three girls, they're in groups. A concert happens where a singer comes along or a dancer or whatever, and they go in groups. Not one or two, in groups. They go to commit fahisha, neglecting the Maghrib prayer, neglecting the Isha prayer, neglecting the Fajr prayer, because as soon as they get home, they're too tired. Wasting their bodies, wasting their energy, wasting their youth, wasting their health. On what? On just fulfilling the desires of this body. Everywhere in the world they exist, brothers and sisters. Rasul Sallallahu said, when you see this, then await for the last hour to come. One of them that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that one of the signs would be that intoxicants would be widely used. Nakedness. That people would begin to remove their clothes. And he said until it would get to the point where people would actually walk around in the marketplaces in shorts with their thighs fully exposed. Um, he said also that people would have sexual intercourse in front of other people. Um, he said that it would get so bad that you would see people fornicating on in public places and the best people would be people who would say, can't you do that somewhere else? Another one would be speed in travel. He said great distances would be traversed in very short times. And he said also that uh, people would hop between the clouds and, and the earth. And he said that um, there would be musical instruments would be everywhere. And he said that also that people would dance with instruments on their head, which some have interpreted as headphones. And they would spend the whole night dancing like that. He also said that uh, you would see singing wi women prevalent uh, in public spaces. Um, because traditionally that was something that people did in private things, but he said it would become out open into the public. Um, and he said that there would be many people with the, which would be whisperings, like there would be many confused people that would have a lot of psychological type of problem. The Prophet ﷺ said, There shall come a time upon my ummah when their prayers are not prayed correctly. And when high buildings spread in every place, when people swear in the name of Allah a lot about everything without fulfilling their oath, people curse each other a lot. Bribery and adultery prevails. People neglect the hereafter in order to buy the luxuries of this world in exchange for the hereafter. So people become materialistic. If you see this happening in your time, then seek refuge, seek refuge. In one hadith, the Prophet was mentioning something and then said to Ziyad ibn Labid, may Allah be pleased with him, that this will not happen until knowledge goes. Ziyad was confused. How will that be, Ya Rasulullah? If we recite the Quran and we teach it to our children, and then they recite it, and then they teach it to their children, how will it be that knowledge will go, Ya Rasulullah? And the Prophet said, Thakulatka Ummah, Ya Zia. May your mother be bereaved of you, Zia. Do you not see these Jews and Christians reciting the Torah and the Injil? And not acting according to anything in those two books? Meaning it won't simply be about reciting that will save us, but it will be about internalizing and acting upon the revelation. It is easy to recite and it is harder, of course, to act. But the salvation is in the acting upon, not in merely the reciting. So knowledge will be lifted and jahl and ignorance will prevail upon the people. From the signs of the end of time, that there will be that the most, that the happiest person on earth will be the fool, the one who is unintelligent, the one who is like a clown. He is the one who has like an adult body but a child's mind, not because of an illness, but simply because that's the way that he's fashioned himself. And in another hadith, the last hour will not come until there is a prevalence on the earth of the Luka ibn Luka. This fool, the son of the fool, a situation of idiocy, a, a world where you have silly people who are 
speaking and silly people who are enjoying themselves. Everyone, of course, knows that we are living in the age of, of celebrity culture. Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, described the situation, how will you be when fitna clothes you? The one who is young will grow older and the one who is old will grow older. A time of confusion. It continues when your Quran reciters become many, but your fuqaha, your scholars become less. And when your money increases, but your trustworthiness decreases. In the hadith of Zahir Muslim, he will sell his religion for a small price from this dunya. People who will leave Islam, people who will abandon Islam. And in light of this, you have that hadith where the Prophet mentioned that before the end of time, there will be Dajjalun, Kadhabun. There will be imposters and liars. And they will come to you with a, with a talk that neither you've heard before or your fathers have ever heard before. New talk, like a revisionist Islam, a revised version of Islam, a repackaged, redefined Islam to suit everyone. But the Prophet said, beware of them and your fathers should beware of them. They should not misguide you, they should not be a trial for you. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, before the end of time, you will see this prevailing sign. What is it? There will be afflictions, 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 trials, tests of hardship. Afflictions that are like smoke filling the air, darkness with dark clouds above you, and it will weaken the heart of a person just like his body weakens. In the morning he is a believer, and by the evening he becomes a disbeliever. And in the evening he is a believer, and by the morning he is a disbeliever. So much fitan, confusion, deception, lies. A person in the evening is a believer. By the morning they went on the internet, and it confused everything about their religion to the point where they become atheists. They become Something other than their own religion. We live in this time today. And he said, when there will be more evil people than the good ones, to the point when, listen to this, when the believers will hide themselves. Too ashamed or too embarrassed or too scared to show themselves that they are believers. Just like the way, Rasul said, just like the way hypocrites today hide themselves. But Rasul said that the believers begin to feel shy to show that they're believers. They're too afraid. They don't want to get up and feel proud of it. Because they're afraid that they'll be blamed by their friends and told, look at you, you're acting like a Muslim now. The Prophet described a world, my dear brothers, before the end of time. A world of difficulty. And a world of trials and a world of tribulation. In one hadith he said, the last part of this ummah will be given as tests and trials, but the beginning of it was given as preservation. And the people will become shaken up by that difficulty. And then it will go, and then another will come. And the believer will say, هَذِهِ muhlikati. In this trial is my destruction. And then that will also pass. And then another one will come. And the believer will say, this one will destroy me. And then that will also go. And so the Prophet said, whoever wants to save himself from the fire and enter paradise, let, him de let his death come to him whilst he believes in Allah on the last day. He said, there will come upon a people, a time, a situation of, of difficulties. So much so, by him in whose hand is my soul, this world will not go until a day comes upon the, the people in the world when a man will pass by a grave and he will roll in the dust of that grave and he will say, I wish I was in the place of this man in his grave. And that is not because of day, not because he has any debt, but it's because of tribulations and hardships and difficulties.
that people would prefer to be in the grave than to be on the earth because of how many things are enveloping and overwhelming them. In one hadith, the Prophet also mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, soon the nations of the world will gather to eat of you, fight you, the way they gather to eat a meal, partake in eating a meal. And the companions, they were shocked. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, will we be a few in number on that day? You will in fact on that day be many, many people. Allah will take the fear out of the hearts of your enemies and place that fear into your hearts. You'll be like the froth on the sea. You'll be like scum, despicable, utter rubbish. No regard for you, worthless. Anything can happen to you. There's no reaction, nothing. Blind, deaf, nothing. And you will have wahan, you will have this disease called wahan in your heart. And they said, what is that, Ya Rasulullah? You will love dunya, you will hate death. You will not have the willingness to make any effort for anything. If you're infatuated and in love with the dunya. In one hadith, the Prophet described it when he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that before the end of time, that time will be brought close. That is not simply some kind of mass media cliche or a, a perceptual illusion that we think as if time is speeding up. There are some truths about the time that we're living in that no one can deny. For the last 50 years, the speed in which technology has emerged and changes made in the last 50 years are perhaps more than the changes made in the world, in the demographics of the world, in the politics of the world, in the social structuring of the world, in the speed of technology, of communication, of mass media, of networking between people, more changes than in the last five, six, seven, eight hundred years, in the last 50 years. So we are experiencing the world in a, in a much faster way. In the way that we travel, in the way that we view and even see events. So when the Prophet described and said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the year will become like the month, and the month will become like the week, and the week will become like the day, and the day becomes like the hour, and the hour becomes like a spark of fire. There are things you can do now in a, a month that would previously take you a year to do. And things that people can do in a week that will previously take them a month to do. And things people can do in a day that would take them a week to do. And things people can do in an hour that will take them a day to do before. Where Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did tell us that there will come a time when upon my ummah they will begin to follow them step by step, foot by foot, that if they were to enter the hole of a lizard, they will follow them. They said, O Messenger of Allah, do you mean that we will be following step by step the customs and traditions and morals of the Christians and Jews of that time? He said, yes, who else? The Romans will be the largest in number and power and influence. This is a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ. you find it in Sahih Muslim. For Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, I want you to listen to this beautiful hadith. <clears throat> which is in Bukhari and Muslim. He said, What will you do when Iraq is denied its currency? What will be your state and what will you do when a sham, when its currency is denied? And what will you do when Egypt, its currency will be denied? And you return to where you began in the first place. What does this mean? When a country falls, its currency falls as well, doesn't it? The Rasul Azam was asked, how will it fall? And he said, by foreign intervention. What Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells detrimental hadith wallah. He said, there is no good in you, O Muslims, when the day comes that the people of Sham are corrupt. Their state is corrupt. They're neglected. They're 
state is destruction. There is no good in you. As though saying, sham is the heart of you. And if its people are not looked after anymore, what is wrong with the ummah of the Muslims of the world? Something is terribly, terribly wrong. We can blame the leaders. And Rasul Sallallahu did say that there will come a time when you will have leaders who are form, in the form of dictatorship and they are unjust and they will lead you in tyranny. And he also said, when the time comes, the trust is given to the person who cannot hold it. But what about you and me who are not leaders? Another sign of the day of judgment is that you will see the barefooted, half naked, destitute, shepherds. They will compete with each other in making the highest buildings. Who are these shepherds? The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Humul Arab. You look today, subhanAllah, the tallest building in the world is in Dubai, just, just under 800 meters. And now, the, in Kuwait, they want to build a building which is called Burj Al Mubarak Al Kabir, a thousand and one meter, just over a kilometer. All the architect drawings are made. So then the Saudis are now that want to bring, make the kingdom tower. They will be the Arabs. But see, all these buildings, but no Issa. You have no say on the world stage. The more you build, the more you ridicule. You have all that wealth, but nobody takes you serious. Because nobody's ever taken people serious because of the cars that they drive, because of the building that they live in. People take you seriously with what you contribute to humanity. The Prophet ﷺ said, a time will come that the belly of Makkah will be cleft open. Cleft means to make a hole in something, to make a hole in the surface. And river-like passages will be dug through. Now, this narration baffled the Muhaddithin. The best interpretation they could come out with, that Makkah today is a very dry place. A day will come that Makkah will be a very moist place, a very wet place. If you look historically at Makkah, Makkah was in the center, and then it's surrounded by mountains. Today, Makkah is on each side of the mountains. The ulama say, now today we understand this narration of the Prophet Sallallahu They actually meant that the, the belly of Makkah meant the mountains will be cleft open and you will have river-like passages. If you look at anything, all those tunnels look like rivers turn the other way. That's what they look like. Rivers turn upside down. And the ulama say, now we understand this narration. And then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the same narration, he said that the buildings in Mecca will be higher than the mountains. SubhanAllah. You look at that monstrosity that they have in Mecca today. It's one of the tallest buildings in the world. The Prophet described a world where sins will increase and open sins will increase and adultery will increase. And all these signs before the end of time signal bigger things that will come, my dear brothers. Major signs before the Day of Judgment. One of the last of the minor signs, because it's not included in the major signs that come from the Hadith, is the appearance of the Mahdi. People would want to pledge allegiance to him and he will reject, refuse the first time and the second time he will accept. And then between the Rukan and the Maqam of Ibrahim السلام, in the Tawaf area where the Kaaba is, he will accept and then the Muslims will give the Bay'ah authority to him. But the idea is that he will be a Khalifa, he will be a Muslim ruler and he will rule with uh, justice and unite the affairs of the Ummah. The Sahaba were talking on one occasion and the Prophet asked them, what are you talking about? And they said, we're talking about the last hour. And the Prophet said, the last hour will not come until you see before it ten signs. Now, this is the hadith, one of them that details the ten major signs before the end of time. So he listed them, not in order, however. 
and the descent of Isa alayhi salam and the Dajjal and, but he represents a major sign before the end of time وَيَأْجُوجُ وَمَأْجُوجُ and the coming out of these two tribes of people Ya'juj and Ma'juj and again these, these are human beings these are not strange looking short people and there will be three earthquakes or earth splits uh, one in the east and one in the west and one in the Arabian Peninsula and the rising of the sun from the west one of the last of the signs of the end of time and after, of course, we have the hadith. After that sign, there will be no repentance accepted from anybody ever. Right. And a creature who will come before the end of time. He will, he will be, have the stature of a human, meaning with arms and with legs. Uh, a creature, a beast, and he will brand people on their heads in terms of their belief or their non-belief. The a smoke, very thick, dark, black smoke towards the end of time and then there will be a fire from Yemen that will gather the people uh, for the judgment.